Please join me in welcoming world number one, Jin Young Ko. Jin Young, um, when did you arrive and, and what's your practice been like so far? Yeah, I've been here. I arrived here last Tuesday, um, Monday, Monday after. Oh, did I play last week? No, week no. off. No, <laughs> week off. So I arrived here on last on Monday, and I got here Tuesday, and I started practice Wednesday, and I played a couple of days before this week, and I played yesterday and today. And um, what's your your impressions of the golf course? Yeah, I heard a lot of histories from this golf course, and I watched it. Uh, the Tigers won the U.S. Open, and Gary Woodland, he won the this U.S. Open. So I watched everything. And, yeah, i really excited to play this golf course. I really wanted to play this go- golf course. Yeah, I I thought, yeah, I my life is pretty good because I can play this place. So I think I'm a very lucky player in the world. We're going to open it up to questions. Doug on the right, but we'll wait for a mic. <laughs> would you have Would you have come to a U.S. Open course that early if it wasn't Pebble Beach? Uh yeah, just greens or a little slow, and but pretty much same as this condition. But yes, like starting today, I think getting. By day, by day by day is will will be more faster the greens and yeah have you have you ever oh, come right. come to a golf course so early here to prepare no no it's first just time just because it's pebble beach yeah just i wanted to enjoy the views and i wanted to eat oysters in san fran so i got early what and lastly what what did you find to be the hardest shot here, mm-hmm. yeah, greens are poas. Greens are like a little tricky to read the break, and the rough is sticky one. So some some lies fine, but some lies really sticky and long long. So it's hard to hit really well. So yeah. What's uh, the hardest hole? Um, I think. Uh, number eight, mm-hmm. Jordan's, yeah, just before the, the Steve. Did you look over? For that? Did you look over the cliff there where Jordan hit it from? No. <laughs> <laughs> here to Kent. The same vein. What's your favorite hole out here and why? Uh, number seven, because short. <laughs> <laughs> if not into the breeze, yes. <laughs> Number seven might be short, but it is certainly mighty. We're looking at her best results in the U.S. Women's Open. Jin Young Ko has made the cut in all six starts, and she has three straight top ten finishes. Her closest call came back in December of 2020 when she fired a final round 68 to finish tied with Amy Olsen for second, just one shot behind A. Lim Kim. It's... uh been really exciting to see Jin Young Ko return to the kind of form that we are so used to seeing the number one performing at. Of course, she fell away a little bit last season, struggling with wrist injuries, struggling a little bit with mental battles. Paige, but she's back and she's already won twice this season. She has a real appreciation for the history of the game as well, winning the Founders' Cup, saying how inspiring that was. And you know how much she's going to be appreciating the history here at Pebble. What do you like about her this week and picking up her first US Women's Open? Uh, well, one of the things that she's tremendous at is just avoiding mistakes. And when it comes to U.S. Opens is the greatest test that makes you be smart around the golf course, and Jin Young Ko is just that. Um, I think it's interesting that there's parallels with Lorena Ochoa in her world number one record, because she also has Dave Brooker on the bag, who was Lorena Ochoa's caddy when she was at the height of her career. Um, but you mentioned the Founders' Cup win, and, and you mentioned some of the struggles she went through 2022. And, and when I think about her in this season, I actually think back to the first win of the season. I believe it was Singapore. And she was asked about it afterwards, and she said, that is the, this is the most important win. They said, compare this win to any other win. She said, this is the most important. They said, why? She says, because of the struggles I went through, because of where I had to come out of. And, and you don't 
you don't often hear players talk about it, but Jin Young Ko is quite refreshing in the press room, mm -hmm. um, very honest. Um, and it, it, to me, when she said that, I immediately thought, okay, what's next for her? Because she's got this renewed sense of um, appreciation from where she's come. Yeah, she is terrific to listen to. Maybe wants some oysters too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's funny. She's got a great sense of humor. Yes. Uh, you know, look, I look at her in the U.S. Open, and I, I think you know, a bit like we were talking to Roseanne earlier about carrying around all that expectation. She's gotten off to slow starts in her career in the U.S. Open. Even the year where she finished second in 2020, she started off with 70. She was in 55th position. Uh, she's averaged right at 73 in her career in the first round of the U.S. Open, and yet she continues to play great golf in the U.S. Open, uh, but she's playing catch-up. So I look at her first round as, look, you know, you go out there and be the same person in the first round that you hope to be on Sunday. Uh, and it just, you know, she played okay last year in the opening round, but other than that, she really hasn't played particularly well in the opening round. So that's dealing with expectation. Uh, the golf swing we know is there. Some mind-blowing things that she's done in her career. To go 114 holes without making a bogey, uh, Tiger Woods never did that. To hit 66 greens in a row, uh, you know, that's machine-like stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, humans don't do that stuff. <laughs> uh, but I think what came clear, listening to Amy Olson talking about balancing her scholastic achievements with her athletic achievements in college, was there's just no secret. It's just hard work. At the end of last year, she was disappointed with it, but she went to Vietnam for a month. Uh, to do two things, to meditate and to work on her golf swing, to work with her coach, Si Wu Lee, uh, you know, who is, uh, that's where he makes his camp in Vietnam. She went there for a month to find sort of the solitude and get back to the type of golf that she was playing really in 2019. You know, she's gone now with her talent, 13 majors without a win. Uh, that's when you, you hold them to different standards when they have talent like Jin Young Ko does. What's, what's neat about her too is that as as is true with a lot of great people, is that when the, the bell goes off, they're ready to go. And it doesn't matter whether she's here a week and a half ahead, as she actually was at Baltistral two weeks ago at KPMG. She got there a week ahead of time, and Amy Rogers, our Amy Rogers, asked her about it. She says, well, how did that help you? She goes, it didn't. <laughs> um, but then you go back to she won tour championship, having not hit any range balls ahead of time because of the wrist injury. She also, at Founders Cup this year, Every single day that week talked about how tired she was. Mm -hmm. She was mm -hmm. conserving energy. She was only showing up to the golf course one hour before her tee time rather than two hours because she needed to conserve the energy in order to, to finish out that golf tournament. But as with any great athlete, they're ready to go, regardless of the day of preparation. And I think Jin Young Ko is, is a product of that, and we've seen it year and year, er, over several years. Yes, yeah, speaking of the exhaustion at the Founders' Cup, she said she was so tired competing out there that she was napping with her eyes open before she was teeing <laughs> off uh, on the tee boxes. But hey. I do that during the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to think it's a little bit more entertaining than that, Randall. <laughs> Jin Young Ko, she's your world number one, and she is an absolute favorite this week.